Yeah. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. Welcome back to the Dallas Prospect, everybody. I am DDP, and today we are talking a rather spicy Mavericks victory. The Mavericks not only come back from down, what was it, 24 at one point in this game? Huge deficit early. The Mavericks rally all the way back against the team fighting for their lives, a team that had been very, very red hot until just recently. And they take down in-state rival Houston in the process. So, Eastside, wherever you're at, suck it. The Mavericks get this one, 147-136 in OT. And uh, this is a rather, rather juicy game, if I say so myself. The Dallas Mavericks not only show a lot of grit and determination, not only show a lot of heart that you would want to see out of your team as we head into the final week of the season, they get superstar performances out of their two guys, and then they get huge performances out of key role players as well. Luka and Kyrie combine for 85 points. However, you also get huge plays down the stretch, mammoth shots and plays from Dante Exum and from PJ Washington. None of that should be overlooked. Exum has basically made himself into the third most clutch player on this team. I actually kind of liked the signing of Exum for what they got him for. I did not have that on my bingo card, however. I am quite, quite uh, impressed with what I've seen from him. His clutch shot ability, hitting these game-winning shots, hitting these big money shots when it matters. And what I really love is the mental toughness that you see. Whether you're talking about him getting called for that foul before he gets smacked in the face with, what, 30 seconds left in the game, moments after he had just missed a shot that could have been huge for them, comes back, avenges the mistake, as Houston has a chance to put this game away at the foul line. 83% free throw shooter, Jabari, uh, Jabari Smith Jr. Yeah. Goes 0 of 2 at the line, leads to a fast break opportunity in which Exum knocks down the three as the buzzer sounds. I especially love Derek Harper calling, got it, while the ball is in mid-flight. That is some serious bravado there. Just makes the call all that much better. Uh, and Dallas comes out in overtime. It doesn't matter to them that they've scaled the hill. They'd never led in the game. They'd come all the way back to tie it at one point. But Houston just kept at them, kept hitting big shots. Uh, I know that people like to look at Dylan Brooks and say, like, dude's a clown. He was 0 of 8 against Dallas the other day when de they ended the 11-game win streak. Houston was on at the time. But he absolutely had himself a huge game last night, excuse me, yesterday afternoon, with 29 points, 5 of 6 from 3, 9 of 14 from the field. It took a star-studded performance from Dallas to win this game. And Houston, hey, credit to them. I'll, I'll give them credit. I know it's Houston. And I even know it's uh, East Side's team, but I'll give some credit. Houston had been red hot, had a 111 straight. Dallas snapped that streak. Then they lost the game against the Warriors. Suddenly they find themselves fighting for their lives. A loss yesterday meant the end of their season. Mathematical elimination from the playoffs with one week left in the season. So they were they were still up against it. But because of how hot they had been and with how they played yesterday with everything on the line, you did think there was a chance. You might not have said like a really, really good chance just yet, but you felt they had a chance. And they came out and they fought, you know, whether it's their rookie immediately taking a shot at uh, Maxi getting a flagrant two and ejected in the first quarter when Houston's up like 20 points practically. Whether you're looking at that uh, or you're looking at just their big shot making, including Reggie Bullock. Reggie Bullock hit a big three uh, late in regulation there as well. I actually thought it was big for Dallas that they were able to get him fouled out because Bullock, yeah, 23 minutes, but 11 points, three of three from three, four, four from the field. Like this was a little bit of a Bullock revenge game. And you kind of had a feeling of like, okay, well, Dallas did lose, uh, you know, one of those games against the Warriors. They're, they're moving a little bit. They're still in a good spot, still locked in where they're staring down the five seed, four seeds looking a little, a less likely or two games back at this point, but regardless, you'll be locked into a matchup with the Clippers. It looks like that's huge. That is going to be interesting to see the, the three Pete rubber match here 
it's not even a rubber match. That's not even the correct way to say it. That would imply Dallas won one of those first two series. Can Luca and the Mavericks finally get over the hump? That's a question for another day. But for now, this Mavericks team is playing very good basketball at exactly the right time of year. And they've just got superstar, just bravado and power that few teams can handle. Again, 85 points from Luca and Kyrie. Kyrie, 48 points in 45 minutes, seven rebounds, two assists, two of 25 from the field. The dude was a machine. Absolutely. And I think he's one of now five Mavericks to go for at least 48 in a game. I mean, that's stupendous stuff there. Like, you've not had somebody not named Dirk or um, Luca doing that in the last 20 years. You, you just really haven't. So, 48 for Kai. I kind of wanted him to get that 50 spot, but you know what? Didn't matter. I love what we saw from Dante Exum hitting some big shots late, including the buzzer beater I already mentioned. I love. P.J. Washington splashing those two corner threes. His offensive game is starting to finally come around. His free throw is still a little shaky, but he does hit two big free throws there that Dallas really needs to hold themselves in that favorable position. And it's just a lot of good things, man. A lot of good things from this team. Now, I will say they are still a little banged up. Luka was very clearly hampered. He missed a game the other day with knee soreness. Uh, hobbled out there late in this game. Bloody knee. I don't know what's going on with that. If that's just like court burn scabs peeling off, as some people were wanting to say, maybe that's just the rub some dirt in it mentality. Or if he actually is dealing with a little bit of something here, but Luca still down the stretch playing excellent defense in that he has 37 points, nine rebounds, 12 assists, by the way. And he gets just a couple of just absolutely gorgeous assists late in OT just to completely put this away. And Dallas, like I said, they win by 11. So you look at that and you say like, oh, Houston had nothing. No, Houston was right there until the final minute. It's just that they would miss. Dallas would hit a three. They would miss. Dallas would hit a three. They would miss. Dallas would get a driving basket. So like there's your eight points right there. That's your difference. That is the difference in this game. Dallas just dagger, dagger, dagger. Well, the Luca dagger at the end is just a layup. It's not a dagger, but you get the point. They buried him at the end that made it look the way that it did. So a sensational performance from Dallas, a sensational game from them. They look like they are locked into that five seed, and it's going to be the Clippers regardless of what happens in the final week in all likelihood. In all likelihood, they got a two-game lead on Phoenix uh, and the tiebreaker at this point. So pretty strong that they're going to hold in that four or five range, and no matter what, it's going to be the Clippers at that point. So I'm, uh, I'm here for it. Some other performances here, PJ Washington and Dante Exum, both of guys I've already raved about. Both of them had 14 points apiece. Uh, Washington also gets you 13 boards, which I thought was huge. And again, Exum, nine rebounds. So you got a lot of rebounds out of those guys. Dallas overall wins the field goal percentage battle 54 to 49. They don't win the three-point battle um, in terms of percentage, but they do... Oh, yeah. I mean, it's 41% to Houston, 38% for Dallas. So it's still above average shooting for them. And they're able to basically match what the Rockets are bringing there, despite, again, the Rockets having some great performances. The free throws are huge for Dallas. 40 of 45 at the line. This team has really struggled at times with its free throw shooting. So being able to get that kind of performance, that kind of clutch performance there, especially in a game that goes to OT, is, is huge. Houston, meanwhile, goes 27 of 35. So they get a lot of free throws, too. But Dallas makes themselves, generates a lot of opportunities, and then converts them. Dallas did have way too many turnovers. They had 17 turnovers. Early on, Luka looked like he was sitting there with just butterfingers all day, um, you know, struggling to really hold on to the ball and control things early on. Like I said, Dallas starts out with a really bad start to this game. Like the first eight, nine minutes, it felt like they were sitting on nine points. And you're just kind of like, well, this might be the, the rare dud that we've not seen much of lately. That's no good. But fortunately, they're able to pull it together and dig it out of the fire, which you got to love. You got to appreciate. Uh, they crush on the boards, 47 to 32. That's huge. And uh, yeah, really, it just kind of boils down to they had their opportunities and they capitalized. And while Houston had a lot of fight, a lot of heart, a lot of desperation like you would expect, a lot of times it's the more desperate team that pulls it out. That first game against the Warriors, they were the more desperate team. The go around, they had a chance to clinch a spot in the play-in and Dallas responded. And I loved that. This moment here, I felt coming into the game, like 
Houston's fighting for their life right now. They cannot, like, they lose, they're done. Dallas is kind of in that spot where it would be easy to pull back. It would be easy to say, you know, we're up two games on Phoenix. We're we're not locked into the 4-5, but we're right there. And, it, and teams pass for the Mavericks, I feel like they might dial back and just kind of try to let it come to them. And maybe if it's there, they'll try and seize it. But just be too passive, a little too complacent. That wasn't the impression I got watching this game. Maybe the first... First half of the first quarter, first half and change of the first quarter. But they really did settle in and just go like, all right, fine. You want to do this? Fine. Gloves are off. Crack the knuckles. Ring the bell. Ding, ding. Let's go. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved everything about this team's fight, heart, grit, and the way they just kept coming at them. There were so many times where Houston would hit a big shot, and it's like Dallas pulls right back into it. Houston gets a bucket, and you're like, oh, okay, that might be – you know, eventually you get stuck in the side enough times, it's going to eventually make you double over. And Dallas just never did. They just kept coming back at them. And Exum, very reminiscent of a, another recent game, which now leaves me as I try to think about it, um, had that moment where misses an opportunity or makes a crucial mistake in a big moment where you're like, oh, that might have been our last chance. But fate rewards him with another chance, another opportunity, and he capitalizes on it. This team has a little something, something right now. They are, they are a defensive-minded team. Don't let the fact that they gave up 136 in this game. Don't give the, uh, dis discount the fact that they gave up 77 or whatever in the first half. I get it. But this team really is a very athletic, long athletic, defensive-minded team suddenly post-deadline. And yeah, they had that rough stretch for a minute, but they've largely settled in. This is a team that's won, what, like 14 of their last 17? Something like that, like 15 of their last 18, maybe like this team is cooking right now. And they are in. A, I mean, we're still in play for 50 wins. That is phenomenal. When you look at what this team has had to overcome and what they've had to fight through the injuries, the missed games by starters that they've had to contend with. So let's see what they're able to do. I'm going to go catch the end of this eclipse business here, because as you can see, my lighting has changed. That is not me. That is the outside lighting as we are in full eclipse mode here. So let me know in the comments, it, it, how good of a Mavericks win is this? How much can we take away from this as this team moves in towards the postseason picture here? We've already clinched a spot. Let's see what we can get. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. Don't forget to like the video. And until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!